Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M. Jemais. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you, cherish you. We thank you, Lord, that we, we display our salvation every day to you by having a relationship with you and praying and interceding for our brothers and sisters that are still in the world praying for the lukewarm to get right and get saved and be in the right focus with you is there being is you being the heavenly father as well and we thank you and praise you for all things amen all right well today's sermon is called the tree of life the cross the tree of life the cross the tree of life the cross amen and we're, let's go to uh, Genesis, Bersha, uh, Bersha, chapter 2, verse 7 through 17. 7 through 17 of 2 of Genesis, Bersha. In the beginning, our, our beginnings, our creation, all those things. Okay. And the word of God speaks and saith, then Yahweh God formed a, 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 a person, Adam, a person, Adam. And from the dust of the ground, uh, Adama, the breath, into his nostril. So he, in Hebrew, he became from a, a, a Adam to Adama, Adama, breath, living being, uh, in, in a person of Adam. From the dust of the ground, a living being. And Yahweh God planted a garden towards the east in Eden. See, Eden was the first nation that God gave man and woman. But he to the to Eden a garden in the east. In the towards the east of Eden. There he put a person whom he formed out of the the ground Yahweh God caused to to grow every tree planet and a, a, a appreciation of good and good for food including the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil amen a river went out of Eden, which is not necessarily the garden, but the nation. And the garden was in this nation called Eden. God gave us a nation called Eden with the garden. He called garden. Doesn't really have a name, but people take it as the garden being as Eden. That's not. The nation was called Eden, but there was a garden within Eden, just like the scriptures say here. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Did you see what it just says? The, the river went out of Eden to water the garden. Amen. And from there, it divided into four stems. So it starts as one big river, and then if, and it goes into four smaller, medium-sized rivers. And the name of the first was the Pephon. It went throughout the land of uh, Hephla, where there is gold. The gold of the land is good. Aromic resins of onyx stones are also found there. The name of the second was the Givon. It and it winds throughout the land of Cush. And the name of the third, Typhus, it is the one that flows towards the east of Asher. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And, amen. And Yahweh God took the person 
and put him in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. And this is kind of where they think it, that the name Eden is representing the garden, but really it's representing that it's within the nation of Eden that he created for mankind. Amen. To, to cultivate and care for it. And Yahweh God gave the person this order. You may freely eat from every tree in the garden, except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You are not to eat from that, because on that day that you eat from it, it will become certainly that you will die. Amen. And so, again, there, it goes down to the two trees. It's always been about the two trees. All throughout humanity, it's always been two ways of thought, two trees, two ways of thought, two ways of being, and two ways of doing things. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is the way that Satan wants you to go. It's, it's the thoughts that are not perfect in God's ways. Amen. And the tree of life is from 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 the spirit from jesus and uh it's and all its ways are perfect and it's full of wisdom and maturity and the things that you need to gain ground in life amen of understanding so this continue so there's two ways of thought there's the tree of knowledge a good and evil way of thought and there's a correct way of thought which is from the tree of life amen and we're going to see that not only that cross is just a cross, but it's it's more than this. That it's it's the tree of life symbolically given back to us to have that 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 way of thinking that's correct, that that holy way, that good way, that and having that perfect relationship to, with with our God that loves us. Amen. Let us go to now to Exodus chapter four, verse one through five. One through five of four. Shemot. Shemot. Which means names. Amen. The book of names. All right. And it says, Moshe replied, but I'm certainly they won't believe me and they won't listen to what I say because they they're saying, Yahweh did not appear to you. And Yahweh answered him, what is that in your hands? And he says, a staff. And he says, throw it to the ground. And he threw it to the ground, and it turned into a snake. And Moshe recoiled from it, meaning picking it up from the towel. And then Yahweh said to Moshe, put your hand out, take it. By the tail. And and he reached out from his hand and took it hold of it, and it became a staff in his hand. This is so that they will believe that Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Amen. Praise God. So that staff, that staff of life, you know, which which was a stake in in you know that was that he was on was transparency throughout scriptures, amen, as you'll see. As you'll see that it all stems that God wanted to bring the tree of life of his the ways that he thinks back to us. Amen. And that, that he wanted us back into the fam, the back in the family. Amen. Now let's go to Isaiah, Yeshehu, which means delivering God. Chapter 11, 1 through 5. 1 through 5 of 11 of Isaiah. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord God. Amen. But a branch will emerge from the trunk of of Yesse. A shoot will grow from his 
roots. The spirit of Yahweh will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counseling and power, the spirit of knowledge and the, the reverency of Yahweh. He will be expired by the reverency of Yahweh. He will not judge by the what he his eye sees or decide by what he, he ears hear. But he will judge the impartial just, justice. And he will decide fairly for, for the humble of the land. He will strike the land with a rod from his mouth. And slay the wicked with the breath from his lips. Justice will be the belt around his waist. Faithfulness, a sash around his hips. Amen. So the rod, the, the rod, the, the, it goes from a rod, it goes from the tree, the rod, closer to what originally was. Amen. Now to a root, a branch. Amen. And as you can see, God is blooming this, this thing right back into what it originally was for mankind. To eat from the tree of knowledge, not from the knowledge of good and evil anymore, but the tree of life. The tree of life, of wisdom. God's wisdom is God's life for us. Amen. Let's go to John, Yokomo, chapter 1, verse 6 through 12. 6 through 12. One of John. And it says, There was a man sent from God whose name was Yochaman, John. He came to be testified, to bear witness concerning the light, so that through him everyone might put the, his trust in God and, and reverent him. He himself was not the light, not, not he came to bear witness concerning the light. This was the true light, which gives light to everyone entering the world. He was in the world. The world came to be through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to, to his own homeland. And yet his people did not receive him. Amen. So we need to bear to the light. The light of the tree of the cross. Which is, becomes the tree of life. We got to bear witness. Of the spirit of God which is the light of to this world, which is Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Shekinah, and more importantly, El Shaddai. Amen. He is the one of the light, and we must go to the light of the cross that became the tree of life symbolically to each of us. Amen. It's through his light and light that he brought this about. For each of our lives. Amen. Let's go to Philippians. Philippia chapter 2 verse 5 through 11. 5 through 11 of 2 of Philippians. Amen. Let's, let's head over there now. And it says. Let your attitude towards one another be governed by your being union with the Messiah Yeshua. Through he, for he was in the form of God. He did not regard equal with God. Some, something to be a process by force. On contrary, he emptied himself. And that he took the form of a, of a slave by being like a human being are. And when he appeared as a human being, he humbled himself still more by becoming obedient even to death, 
Def on the stake, the stake. So it was originally a tree, right? The tree of life. It became a, uh, a stick, a rod. Then it budded into a a a, 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 a part of the plant, you know, into uh, now a, a a stick into a, a plant. Amen. It's 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 going into again the tree of life going to the cross amen and therefore god raised him to a highest place and gave him the the name above all names which is yahweh because genesis the revelation it doesn't start in matthew it starts in genesis works all the way to revelation it's yahweh yahweh saves yahshua yahweh saved the lord god saves and that's why he has the name above all names, because he carries that with him, and who he is. Yeshua, Yahweh saves. The Lord God saves. Even actually in reality, uh, when he's in the heavens, everybody acknowledges him as El Shaddai. Amen. And, and that is the honor of the name given Yeshua. Yahshua. Yahweh saves. Every knee will bow. In heaven, on earth, and under earth. Every tongue will acknowledge that Yeshua, the Messiah, is Yahweh. You heard right. Every tongue will confess that Yeshua the Messiah is Yahweh. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Praise God. Yeshua is Yahweh. He's El Shaddai. Amen. Let's continue by going to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. 1 through 10 of 2 of Ephesians. Amen. And it speaks and saith, You used to be dead because of your sins and acting of, of disobedience. You walked in the ways of the world and obeyed the rulers and powers of the air, who is still at work among the disobedience. Did you hear that? The, the evil spirits walk in those of disobedience. They chose and then they become a slave to those evil spirits. Indeed, we all once lived that way. We followed the passions of our old desires and ob obeyed the wishes of our old desires and our old thoughts, which is the from the tree rooted from the tree of, the, of, of good of good and evil. Um in, in our old nature con, uh, con, conducted, we were uh, headed for God's wrath, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy and love us with much intense love that even when we were dead because of our acts of disobedience, he brought us life, the tree of life, life along with the Messiah the tree of life along with the Messiah it is by grace that has been delivered that is God raised up, us up with the Messiah Yeshua seated us and with him in heavenly places in order to, ex uh, to exalt in the age to come, by infallibly rich in grace, how great is the kindness towards us who unites with the Messiah Yeshua. For we, for you have been delivered by grace through trusting. Even this is not your accomplishment, 
but God's gift, but God's gift. You were not delivered by your own actions, therefore not no one should boast about these things. For we are for for we are of God's making, created in union with the Messiah, Yeshua, for life and of good acts already prepared by God for us to do. Life of good. Three of life. Amen. Let's continue by going to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 25b to 28. 25b of 28 of 2 of the Acts of the Apostles. And it speaks and it saith, I saw Yahweh always before me. For he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. For this reason my heart was glad, my, my tongue rejoiced, and now my body too will live on the certain hopes that you will not ab abandon me to Shiloh, or let your holy ones be see decay. You have made known to me the ways of life, the ways of life. Through the, the tree of life of the cross. Amen. You will fill me with joy by your presence. By the presence of Yahweh. Amen. So let's eat freely of the tree of life through the cross. So what the Mashiach, the Messiah, the pointed one, the, our El Shaddai, Jesus Christ, did for us. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Yahweh. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs, Michelin, chapter 11, verse 30. 30 of 11 of Proverbs. Amen. The, the fruits of the righteousness is the tree of life. The fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. And he who is wise wins souls. And he who has rise wins souls. So the tree of life is, is the fruit of righteousness. Righteousness means three things. I'm going to go to the ancient meaning to what the modern meaning to what the main meaning would be. So the ancient meaning is the right wisdom of the spirit is the ancient meaning of righteousness. The modern meaning of it is right standing with God. But the, the, the meaning that means the most is a right relationship with God. And most of the time it's that. It's a right relationship with God. But you have to have a right wisdom of God. Therefore, you have to eat of the tree of life. Right? And therefore, you have to um, be right standing with God. Within the, in the account, and so righteousness, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of righteousness is the tree of life. It's having a good relationship, it's, it's, it's gaining that wisdom through being righteousness and through understanding you're going to be right standing with God. Amen. Righteousness, fruit of righteousness is the tree of life which the cross symbolically became when he atoned for us. But he also atoned that we'd be back in the family. We once was not fam, but now we're family. Amen? We're, we're God's family now because of what he did on the cross for what he lived as the second Adam, but the continuation of what Abraham did as well. Amen. Reigning the civilization of everything of the tree of life through the cross of of the wisdom of god having a right relationship being part of god's family and 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 being right standing within those things amen so eat of the right tree of life 
the right tree of life, the tree of life. And don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is why scriptures also says in Romans chapter 12, which let's just go there, okay? Because it, it is important um, that at least we read that one part in the front of it. Amen. I exhort you, therefore, brother and sister, brethren, in the view of God's mercy, to offer yourself as as a sacrifice, living, set apart for God. This will please him. It is your logical temple worship for you. In other words, do not let yourself be conformed by the standards of this world. The standards of the world of this world is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. Instead, let keep letting yourself be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind is through the cross, the tree of life, the wisdom that comes through yielding and therefore being uh, wise in the spirit and, and right standing with God, amen, through the relationship that buds through the, uh, the righteous fruits that we have that brings about the tree of life in our life, wisdom understanding goodness of God and a different way of thinking, the righteous way of thinking instead of a, a wicked way of thinking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So that you will know that God wants and will agree that what he wants is good, satisfying, and able to succeed. For I am telling you, every single one of you, uh, through the grace that has been given to me, not by extravagant ideas about your own importance, instead of developing sober esteem by yourself based on the standards which God has given each of us, namely trust. For just as there are many parts of us, union with the Messiah, we can compose one body with each of us belonging to one another. But we have di gifts that differ, which meant to be used according to, tr uh, to the grace that has been given to us. If, a, if the gift of prophecy, which is different than a, than a prophet, gift of prophecy, a comfort, uh, 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 we exalt you. Um, See, use it to ex, uh, esteem of your trust. But if you serve, use it to serve. If you are a teacher, use the the gift of teaching. If if you um, are a counselor, use it to give a counseling and and exhorting. If you are someone who uh, is a giver, do it simply and generously. If you're uh, Position of leadership, it doesn't say politician, it says leadership. Lead and diligence with zeal. And if you are one who does acts of mercy, do it cheerfully. Amen. And a lot of people think that that's a pro. No, the gift of prophecy is different than a prophet, okay? And a prophet does more than just prophesy, okay? Or he feels what God is wanting him to feel at that moment. He acts according to what God wants him to act accordingly to what it is. He speaks what he needs to speak at the right moments. So it's just not just prophecy. There's more than this prophecy. It's whatever God wants it to be, okay? But it, what it, when it's going to be something, it's going to be big. It's going to be like, wow. And... Uh, if you don't catch it, you're not catching very much. I mean, uh, when you don't listen to what he speaks to his prophets. But the gift of prophecy is only one of the giftings of being a prophet, by the way. It's only one of them. There's so many things that would take a while to break down on, on what a prophet is and how different types of prophets there are. You know, there's different forms of different things, you know, and uh, there's different types. There's a seer prophet that sees the things of the future God will give them. 
And then there's the kinds that write things down or scribe prophets. And then there's this prophets that intermix with different things. And there's master prophets that operate in all the giftings of, of not only as being a prophet, um, but also as, as, a, as a preacher, as a teacher, as a and, and, and as evangelist, just kind of like uh, apostle, uh, em emissary, operates, can operate in a little of each of them. Not totally 100%, but a master prophet, on the other hand, operates in all those things in 100% capacity. And uh, they, they look at Elijah, there's a good example. Look at um, Isaiah. There's another good example. Amen. There's some uh, examples of what a master prophet would be like compared to maybe like a it's a prophet or like a like like a, like Obadiah. But then on the other hand, you got seer prophets that that um, sometimes would be a scribe prophet too, which would be like. Samuel, amen. And so therefore he was, um, in a lot of ways, giftings as a master prophet too. Um, because he, he acted as a judge and as a priest too for the people, for, for God's will was for him to do those things too. But this eat of the tree of life today, okay? This eat of the tree of life, this, this all... We all have our certain responsibilities, like it says in Romans chapter 12 here. And we all need to bloom into the tree of life through the cross, you know. And we need to stop eating the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We need to reject that old way of thinking. That's old nature. Old nature is always pointing to what Adam ate, ate instead of what they should have ate. God gave us that symbolically. Even though we don't have the tree physically here, we have it symbolically. He, he brought here symbolically through the cross. The most important part of that tree of life was the wisdom that was brought into humanity through that cross. Amen. And it became the tree of life symbolically because of that. And so we need to change the way our thinking is from what, the, the wicked way of thinking that everybody has. And, and a lot of people in the church, they don't know any better. They were not taught this. That I should have been. And I'm sorry a lot of you haven't. But now you have. You, you just need to repent and turn to God and, and allow him to transfer you over from that way that he never wanted humanity to think like. To the way that he did want them to mature into the tree of life of the cross, the, the tree of life of wisdom, of understanding, of, of going forth and, and, and doing things for all humanity, as well as being obedient to God and as your father. Amen. Through what the spirit of God did when it took on the form of a man. He called himself Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, Yahweh saves, even though he was all spirit and he was all El Shaddai, the one that talked to Abraham and was introduced by Yahweh. Amen. And same thing for, for Moshe, even though he had a greater glimpse of Yahweh, and then later all the, the plagues of Egypt was empowered by El Shaddai, by Jesus Christ, the Spirit, through the obedience of, of Moshe being obedient to the call and just doing, even though sometimes when you have to judge a nation and you have to speak judgment on somebody, it's very wear and tear on you. You didn't have to do it, but you have to be obedient to what God tells you to do you know and so when God says judge something to a prophet you're going to do it when God says bless that person over there you're going to do that you know and uh, 
So it's important to be obedient for what God has called you to do, okay? And sometimes it's going to be hard. And sometimes it's going to be an easy thing, to task to do that God has for you. But whatever it is, we need to be obedient. And whenever God wants a, a fellowship with us, like when he fellowshiped in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve in cool of the day, but he, he likes to test you. He'll, he'll come and try to fellowship really deep with you in a, a very odd situations. Because he wants to see, are you are, is that situation going to override the situation you need to have with God? Even though you're going through that situation. Even though, you know, you might be in a tense work position or you're, you know, you're doing something in the bathroom, combing hair, whatever it is. But God wants some fellowship with you. What, what are you going to do? Are you going to follow through on that, that test that God has? It's like uh, it's, it's like saying you don't have to stop combing your hair or whatever you're doing in the bathroom or wherever you are. But are you going to give some affection to God when he's when he's co coming and calling for a relationship deeply with you? Because if you do, if you don't shut up down, God down, you're going to get such a reward. You're going to get that much closer to God. You're going to get that much more from God out of that then because most people shut god down because you think you're, you're embarrassed because you're whatever you're doing but when you what you should be doing is surrendering to god and then just continue whatever it is you're doing but surrendering to god as with that relationship that you need to recognize that he's deeply trying to have with you at that point in time and, and then the more he'll test you. And if you pass those things, that's when he'll go deeper with you. And that's when you're going to notice you're going to have a, a deeper call to do things for others. This is why a lot of people fail, because they fail to have that relationship. And because he's going to test, he's going to knock on your heart when you're doing something. And if you don't catch it, you're going to miss that blessing of a relationship, deeper relationship with God. So don't let it go, that relationship with God, that deep times with God too. Because he's going to come calling. And I guarantee it's going to be play times that you're going to say, wow, really right now? Yes, right now. He's testing you. What are you going to do? You're going to pass the test? And have that relationship and you know continue to do whatever that is you're doing. But give acknowledge that God is trying to have a relationship a little deeper with you at that point in time. Amen. It's important. That's part of, of transferring from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is it's the wicked way of thinking of good and evil, to the righteous way, the wisdom way of of thinking. Uh, and the brought back into this world from the tree of life through the cross. Amen. God bless you. Now I'm going to pray over those of you that would like to get saved today. Today is the day of salvation. He died on that cross. He brought the tree of life symbolically back. He lived a perfect life as the second Adam and completed the work of Abraham on the cross. Amen. For our benefits. All our benefits. Amen. God bless you. It's time to get saved. Repeat this prayer and be saved, my friends. My little brothers and sisters to be. Pray this prayer. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body. As Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. God loves you. I love you. And there's a lot of the world don't even know what love is. So if you know what love is, even to the remotest, you're doing a lot better than 80% of this world is. A lot of this world in this world, they don't recognize this, but you're going to recognize it. All they know is hate, being beat up, all kinds of things. All these nations, all these bitterness that stems from being beaten with a little child. A lot of these people have. 80% of the world's this way. And so if you were raised up in love, you you got a really neat thing going on. But you need to pray for the 80% of this world that doesn't have that. Oh, there's a lot of nations, a lot of people. And 
God wants to send his love there right now. He wants to show you his love. He wants to show you not only he has love and he knows what happened to you, all of you, and all these nations and all these different things. Maybe from your politicians of your land, or maybe it's just your brother or sister that was older. Maybe it was your father or mother or uncle. It could be many things. It could be the stranger. But God's sending his love right now to you and saying he's happy with you. He loves you. But his justice reigns. And those people that done wrong, they're going to get their just cause of justice unless they repent too. And they and they get right with their creator too. Amen. So the living God loves you. And not only that, but people, other people have the capacity of, of, of pureness of agape love for each other as well. It's unselfish love. It doesn't, it's not about what am I going to get out of it if I love that person. It's about what you're going to do for the other person and not worry about what you're going to get out of it because you're going to get plenty from God back because you're reflecting one of the attributes of God. But there's many of them. Holiness is another one that, that we all got to work with and build upon our, our lives. Because if we don't have holiness, we're never going to have the trueness of nature of what God's love is in the first place. It, same with faith. The, we cannot get it ourselves unless we get the gift free from God called faith. Amen. And so it's not about getting or making it ourselves. It's getting it from the gift giver herself. The Spirit of God gives it to us, but we have to be willing to receive it. Are you willing to receive God's love and holiness and the gift of faith today? Are you willing to receive a hug from God? God knows a lot of you out there in these nations and in different situations. Some, some are worse than others. Some, some are so bad. And God feels for you. And God's going to help you. And it's not going to be like tomorrow those things will be gone. But God is going to heal those things out of your mind and your heart. He came for the brokenhearted and the, and the men, the minds. Amen. Of, and God's going to help you with that. God's going to make you better and feel better. Every day you wake up, look in that mirror and say, I'm, I'm more of a piece of that puzzle that God already finished of myself. Amen. God's going to bring another piece of what he sees you as a solid person. He sees you already are, even though we're not. God is bringing that about every day. Look in that mirror and say, God, what piece of, of that whole me are you bringing to today that that to, to, to learn about and to grow in me. Amen. Because God has got you in his hands. Never leave his hands. Let his hands hold on you and hug you and say, I'm the just God that has fullness of love, fullness of holiness, and I'm taking care of you. And I'm taking care of those that did wrong. And I'm going to bring them around or they're going to get it. You know, one or the other. And if they bring them, if God brings them around, they're naturally going to say they're sorry. And they're going to be your best friends and, and everything's going to work out because God works those things out one way or another. God is a just God and his justice reigns on the, on the just and the unjust. The just for to protect them with his judgment, God's judgment on us, protecting us from unrighteous people doing unrighteous things and hurting us. God's judgment will be on them for if he hurts it, it's all. Amen. But at the same time, his justice is, is going to judge and sentence for the unfair acts that people do in this world as well, to each other as well. Amen. So it rains both ways because God's balance. 
God's balance in everything he does, his justice, his love, his mercies, his holiness. Either his holiness is going to belch you or going to tear you apart. You know, if you're a wicked person, his holiness will tear you apart to sunder. But as, if you're yielding to God, his holiness will build you up and he will be part of you. And you will be a, a son and daughter that he looks up to. And he sees whole already. He sees the whole picture. He doesn't see where you're not whole yet. He says he, he, he sees you whole. And he wants you to grab a hold of that complete picture of you that he sees you to be. And, and grab a hold of a piece of that every day. Look in that mirror and say, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting more and more in the likeness that God sees me already to be. Amen. And you're going to look back and say, wow, God is doing a great thing in me. My brothers, my sister over here, all these people, every God, God is doing a great thing. In us. Amen. So we just got to grab a hold of it. Stay in God's hands. Get Stay inserted into him. It's like a Bible. Insert a piece of paper and close that Bible. You're part of that Bible because you're in that Bible, right? That piece of paper. Symbolically you. Well, you're in Christ Jesus. You're in the Shua HaMashiach. And El Shaddai. You, you, he, you, you're inserted in him. He search you in there in his body. Amen. You're part of him. So you got to go to the head and understand what it is that you are as that part of the body. Amen. And reflect that goodness of God in you. Amen. The hope of glory. Amen. God bless you. The Lord keep you in all his ways. Shalom. 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 Be at peace. For God Almighty is the peace of peace. The Prince of Peace, not the fakeness of peace in the world, but God's peace passes on. Shalom, completeness, whole, peace, nothing severed, nothing, nothing um, broken. He, the shatters of your life, he puts back together, makes it even better. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Be at peace. Be a fullness of what God has called you to be every day. Amen.